Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to work on another Ambassador. And uh, as much as the Ambassadors don't change much, there are folks from time to time that like to see a different version of it. In this case, this is a left-handed Ambassador. This is the 7001. The odd numbers usually indicate a left-handed crank. Uh, 7001 uh, I. And uh, pretty much the same as most ambassadors that you see out there. You'll see when we take it apart internally. Uh, this one's been complaining of a um, uh, roughness on uh, letting the line out. So it's, it looks pretty clean. So my guess is going to be that um, it just probably has some grime inside, maybe a broken piece of line or something like that. But we're going to take it apart. We'll show you how to take it apart, service it, and put it back into uh, work. And in order to do that, I usually like to start with taking the handle off. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to wear a protective glove. We're going to make sure we have a parts tray on hand so that uh, when we take the pieces and parts off, we know where to find them. And uh, we're going to get started. So to get started, you remove the set screw in the handle. That's going to remove the uh, retaining clip that holds the, uh, the handle uh, nut in place. In this case, it is a nut, not a screw. Uh, it sits on the shaft, and we should be able to pull that out. Seems to be a little bit of uh, salt water corrosion behind here, so let's just see if we can't get that out. There we go. And we'll pull the rest restraining clip off. And then the cap. Now this is a left-handed reel, so a lot of times on a left-handed reel, everything works in reverse. So where you would normally tighten the reel by going clockwise, in this case, we're going to use a wrench. This is an 11 millimeter wrench to turn the, the nut clockwise to remove it. So I kind of just uh, think you've got to start thinking backwards. Once we do that, there's going to be a little C-clip on the, uh, the post here. You, uh, you need to remove that uh, C or E-clip in order to get at the, um, get the handle off because that will get in the way. And just be careful that uh, the clip tends to shoot. So the Ambassadors have been very popular. I think this one uh, was manufactured, at least by the schematic, it looks like it was manufactured in 2002, or at least this version of it was, which would be fairly consistent. So I'm saying the schematic. So that's one of the things I do. I always go out and check. Even though I'm fairly familiar with this reel, I go back and check to make sure that um, the pieces and parts are in the right place. And over here, the O2 usually indicates the year that it was made. I could be wrong, but uh, usually indicates the, the year that this thing was made. So I have this on hand so that I can look at all the pieces and parts should I get lost. Also, I, in addition to the, the glove and the parts tray, I always recommend to folks to take pictures along the way. We should be able to pull this up now. It's got a little bit of salt build up in there. I want to take a little file, just run it on the inside. It's, uh, it's exactly what it is. There's a little bit of build up in there. And these, uh, I'm not sure what the metal is made of, but it's obviously filled with, uh, filled with some caked up salt from this ocean use. And so I'm just wanting that down there just to get that clean. And it goes into the parts tray. Next up, you just want to make sure that you take the retention washers off. And as I'm looking at this, uh, that's correct. You have a, a round washer followed by the little tension washer. And then we should be able to remove the, the star adjuster. And again, this is a left-handed reel, so you remove it by threading it clockwise. And you want to check along the way, make sure all the pieces and parts are, are okay and that there's not damage to them. And right now I'm just kind of looking at the uh, the assembly here, making sure that all those teeth are okay and that this is spinning fine. And now you can take those those two uh, drag, actually three, uh, drag washer um, tensioners out. Now this is, the purpose of these is uh, not only spacing, but to put uh, a level of sensitivity to the, the way that the star adjuster knob works. And you can see in this case, they're face to face, there is a gap in, in those washers. So you're going to assume that uh, the way that these things came out, and they actually came out this way, 
um, which is no gap, is fine with the, uh, the person who brought the reel to you. If you wanted to increase the sensitivity, you could reverse them and put the gap uh, in there uh, as they are concave washers. So I'm just going to put those in my parts basket and now I can go over and remove the side plate. These are thumb screws. You only need to break the screw the first twist or two and you can work the rest of it out with, with your thumb. And to do that, there's three of these. So we'll go ahead and take those out. And even though the outside of the reel looks clean, I'm thinking that we're going to see some some salt or something inside that's inhibiting the, the uh, performance. It may just be that the reel hasn't been serviced in a while. So with those three, you should be able to remove the side plate, which we are. I'm going to take a quick look here to see if there's anything that would indicate uh, a problem on the uh, non-gear side. I'm going to open this up. So we have a bearing in the back. We have the idler gear. This is driven by the spool. This drives the, uh, actually the big one is driven by the spool. The little one drives the level wind. You just want to turn that, make sure that your level wind feature is working, which it is. We saw that before. You just want to turn that and make sure that you're going in the right direction. You want to check the level wind idler, and that's not a problem here, but you want to check it to make sure it has all the teeth. This is a plastic gear. That's not unusual. They put them in there so that there's a little bit of flex. You just want to check all the teeth on both the top and the bottom to make sure that it's uh, it's full. And it is. There's some uh, some lubrication on there, but we can go ahead and put a little bit on. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease for that. In this case, it's a, a Pen Reels Precision Grease. It doesn't have to be an Abu Garcia uh, grease to, uh, to make certain that it uh, works properly. It just needs to be a fishing reel grease. And then behind that we have a bearing below, so I'm going to use a fishing reel oil for the bearings. In this case it's Relex, which is an aftermarket fishing reel oil. You can use a uh, pen precision oil, or you can use anything else as long as the, uh, the piece is uh, uh, the piece is a uh, fishing reel piece. We're just going to go ahead and wind that in. And on the back of this one, the reason why you saw me looking there is I have a piece here, which is usually a lockdown piece. And we're going to go to the schematic for a minute and try and find out where that piece belongs. Because that's probably what is causing the issue here. That piece is loose and that piece shouldn't be. So there's a lockdown piece on the inside frame that's come loose and so we're going to have to go over there and, and reset that. So I'm looking at that this way and I'm guessing that uh, that's the problem. So let's go ahead and go do that right now. Okay so we were working on this piece here. We want to find out where it is. We went to the schematic and determined that it belongs inside uh, of the frame here with a, uh, a little clip and uh, guide. We can't get at it this way so we have to take that side plate frame off. In order to do that then we're going to use a uh, Phillips head screwdriver to take those three screws on the side out. And normally I do not remove this side as you saw from the basic service because you can get access to the uh, idler gear and the, uh, the bearings without doing that, but in this case that piece has clearly fallen out and uh, we need to go put it back. I suspect that that's what's probably been dragging the, uh, the performance. It's just not, uh, not sitting, it shouldn't be sitting in there free. Okay, with that we can then, after we take the three off, we can pull the side plate out. And here's where that clip goes. It sits back in here and it holds the level line feature in. So I don't know what happened there, but for some reason it came off. So you take it like that, you wrap it around and press it in. So these probably had trouble with the level wind, even though they may not have known it. But uh, this, is, this is what the issue is here. 
Okay, and then we just want to make sure that we get that in the way. Now I don't have enough finger strength, so we're just going to go ahead and pull it in the rest of the way with that. Now the outside of the case is going to hold this from falling free. So I don't know if somebody had this off before or what the issue may have been, but uh, issue resolved. Now that I have the whole piece off, you might just put another little blob of grease on the other side. Uh, you could do that inside without turning this as well, simply by uh, continuing to turn this with that screwdriver blade. You don't need much, and it will uh, work its way around uh, when it's spinning. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, line these up then. So there's one hole in the case here that does not get a screw. That's the one over here. You want to look for the stud that uh, does not have the uh, piece to it. The threaded insert. And once you find that stud, then it's pretty easy to go ahead and snap that case back on, which is what we just did there. Go put this back in. So I think we've identified what the, the performance issue is, but we're going to go over to the gear side anyway, and we're going to go ahead and uh, clean that up and uh, make sure that we can uh, get this reel back out there fishing. So that's an interesting one. That's the first time I've seen that come loose like that. I don't know. I suspect maybe somebody had this off in the service at one point, couldn't figure it out. Maybe even looked at the schematic and just thought somehow that it hangs on the, uh, the piece there. I don't know. Whatever it is, things are not the way they should be. So corrected. And uh, not the first time I've seen parts put in upside down backwards or in the wrong place but uh, usually that's on something like a, a drag stack or something where they get the, the pieces out of sequence or something but this one's an odd one but that's okay we learn something every day expect the unexpected I think is the message here if you're going to take something apart particularly if it's not your real if you bought it at a flea market or something and you weren't the, the only owner and don't trust it just because you had it serviced professionally that it necessarily was done correctly either. I made mistakes as well. Okay, I'm just going to put that spool back in then. You put the spool back in, you, you need to make sure that the, the line doesn't become in, in, uh, entrapped in the case, and that's what just happened there. Frequent problem. At worst, that leads to the broken line, and uh, you can see how it came through here, so you want to just grab something like a a little pick or something, pull it through all the way. All right, so that side's in good condition. I'm just going to grab a paper towel here. There's a little bit of extra grease on here. We'll just take that off the side plate. Okay, so this one's done now. We're going to go over to the gear side then, and we'll show you how to, to bring this back together. And again, if you're used to working on the, the uh, ambassadors, there's no real tricks on this one. Uh, it's pretty much standard operation pieces and parts in design. So we'll take the two side plate screws out. That's going to enable us to pull the case off. I'm just going to lay those down for a moment. I just want to make sure that those two are the same size. They should be. But again, the more work you do on the front end, particularly in something like this where you're uh, you know, I'm filming it, you, you kind of know where the issues are and, and what's what. Okay, so we're good. Those two are the same. I expected that. And then this plate does jump up because it's spring-loaded. Those are two springs that are underneath that. So just be careful. You want to just pull up on the side plate and that will tell you where the, the balance of this belongs. And you can see this reel has not been serviced in a while. It is just cake full of stuff. And uh, we just want to make sure that uh, that all gets cleaned out. So I start with a paper towel to the extent that I have a, uh, a running portion of this here. There's a lot of grease and, and grime and stuff here. And we have a broken spring here. So we're going to have to go order a replacement spring. Uh, in order to complete this. Oh, it may, it may or may not be broken. Let's take a look. Let's see how that sets. Again, I'm back to the schematic now.
yep we have a broken spring here's the piece that I'm looking for so this piece broke off and we're just gonna we're gonna have to go get a new spring before we can complete the servicing on this wheel okay so that was pretty easy in terms of what in the world's going on there and uh, you know we're gonna have to set this aside for now we'll come back later uh, and fix that spring part but while we're at it just so you can play along with that what we're going to want to do when we go to set that spring is we're going to take this off that'll free this up this goes on the post and then we'll be able to set the spring from underneath uh, to form the release for that again from the side plate standpoint you can see that the reel has not been cleaned in quite some time we're going to go ahead and remove the, the drag stack And we're going to make sure that all of the, the underneath gets cleaned out as well. You can pull up the spool assembly and take that off. And again, most of this is not much more than uh, any of the other ambassadors. It's just bigger. And from the grease, there's a little bit of grease left over here. You can just wipe it all down. But if you have a little bit laying around, it's not dirty. I don't see evidence of it being uh, contaminated. So for the most part, we're okay with that. Put the piece back in. And check this out now, the carrier spool gear. We got some stuff on that so let's go ahead and clean that out. Remember which way it came in. That's going to sit on the two posts. And when you do this the gear always faces out with the slots. Those slots are going to line up with the pin on the spool here. And that's uh, that's what's going to drive the spool. So if you are curious about which way the spool goes, that's that. Okay, now we can come over and, and grab the drag assembly. Since I'm going to be ordering parts anyway, let's go ahead and see if there's a problem with any of the parts. It's well greased. Again, we're finding out that pretty dirty reel. Now this one has a little bit of a, a it's a fork. It keeps pressure for the anti-reverse. It's an older technology. It's not the anti-reverse bearing itself. You want to clean that off. You want to make sure that there's good tension in there. And then that fork simply rides you can see me trying to get it on the teeth. There you go. And that's the way that the anti-reverse will go in. There's the post that the anti-reverse rides on, so we're simply going to throw this back on, sit it on that post, and that's your anti-reverse. So you'll see there'll be friction. It rides free like this. As soon as you go to anti-reverse, that clip pulls the friction. The stud stops that from uh, moving. This is the, the main shaft. When we go to put the handle back on, the C-clip is going to hold that in place. Okay, let's go ahead and pull these out just to make sure these are well oiled. There shouldn't be a problem with that. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I, I don't like a lot of oil on my drag washers. I think it gets in the way. So I'm going to dry these up. And gear sits in and this is our stack pen and again I think there's way too much oil on these these are hard plastic or Teflon they don't need a lot of oil they don't need oil at all quite honestly but uh, this wheel has got it on there so there you go second one these are almost paper thin which not a problem, that's what they are. But uh, So there's two of these washers that are keyed washers. They have the 
the ears on each side. Make sure when you put them in that you have the sequence right and that you also have the uh, those keys falling into the slots on the main gear. If you ever have a question, that, that schematic shows you the sequence of these. So I'm a little bit confused still in my mind. Just kind of playing with this in terms of how that other piece fell out. Very unusual. So somebody had this apart for servicing and didn't know how to put it back together is my, my primary guess. But uh, I guess we'll never know either. Alright, so last of these then. We put that eared washer in. Just cleaning the rest up. Main washer. And then the furrow. So this is as far as I can take the reel right now. It's almost completed. Again, the, the issue is here is that I have this uh, this broken spring. But uh, until such time as I can get this set properly uh, with that spring, there's nothing really I can do. So we'll uh, we'll come back to this one. I'll save this video for now. We'll show you how to set the spring. Uh, as soon as that uh, replacement part is, is purchased and sent to me and then we'll just set that aside for now. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back on this one. Thank you. Okay, so it's been about two weeks since the part was ordered. This lousy little spring here was all that was required, but it was difficult to get because this is a left-handed reel. This is the one that if you remember just a couple of seconds ago on the other video we showed was the broken spring. So let's go ahead and show you how to reinstall that and get this reel back to fishing. So I'm just going to put that uh, piece out of the way. So the first assembly we have then is this piece here which is the the arm that's going to trip on the uh, free spool release. Then we have a toothed eccentric gear and I've taken that off of the cover. You'll see when we reinstall how that came out but uh, uh, this little washer sits on top of this and uh, first thing we're going to do then is we're going to put this back on. There's a hole in the uh, free spool release eccentric. We're going to put that back onto the post here and then we're going to grab the spring and the long tail of the spring belongs in the hole. Actually first I'm going to do it the other way. You'll see that there's a notched spring that's going to slip under the bridge plate it goes in this hole here so we're just going to slip that in first I'll leave that tail proud here's the um, the ramp piece for the um, the free spool release so that goes inside we're just going to lay that in an approximate position at the moment then we will grab the arm and the free spool release part the trigger arm and this is going to sit on this post so onto the post and inside just like that. The only difference is we've got to get that tag arm in before we do that. So I like to put the tag arm on first and just kind of flop it over the post there and just get it set. And now we can set the, the, the ramp piece with that. And that's the way it should mesh. It should be an even mesh here. Unfortunately, I just got the arm out on the wrong side of this. There we go. So that's the mesh that you want to start this. So spring under here. It's into the piece here. We've got a spring here that butts up against this post to prevent it from going too far that way. And we have a small spring that's in my parts container that uh, goes on this between the two posts here to prevent it from too far going the other way. This is that spring. Maybe if I put a little white piece behind there it'll show a little bit easier. This is the spring we're looking for there and that spring goes between the post on the release arm here and this post and there's ridges on both. That is a spring. Hold the one side as you go to put tension on it on the other. And I use a little 
little pin that you've seen me use for multiple purposes to get this done. I always have a little bit of trouble loading them, but I'd rather be safe and take my time loading it on springs than have them shoot off somewhere. And you just play around with it eventually you get it. Sometimes you play around with it more. Use a little screwdriver to push the one end down. There we go. So that's the way your spring set. It sets on the post this way. This is the backstop and the forward stop. You can see the springs operating as such. Okay, with that we can reinstall then. We can take the carrier that has the main gear. And again, that gear, the tooth or the notch side goes into the side plate. Put that carrier in. And we can grab this. Remember this has got that V on it. That's that friction clip sets like that. That goes over the main post and this sits on the post back here. Just leave that in for a moment. I'm going to put the main assembly back on. You saw us clean the, the drag gears before. Mesh that with the spool gear and then the spacer bar up top. And we have our two side plate springs. They're going to go sit in that cavity there. And we're going to load this now with that free spool release lever. Probably dangerous to have done that. This is going to go on the outside. So you want this in release mode, which is what I just tripped to. We want to make sure that our lever is inside. And uh, that lever, it's, uh, I'm going to take these springs off before I test it. Well, we don't have the just looking for that button at the moment. Oh, that's where we are. A little bit of trouble with the anti-reverse load. That's why you want to be careful as you reassemble all of this. There we go. That should be better. Okay, and then once we do that, then we can load in the, the two springs. Grab the side plate now, and that hole is where the lever is going to come through. And this goes underneath the lever, this little metal washer there. So just kind of line up the holes to it. And you should be able to set the side plate in. And then grab those side plate screws before you put that uh, lockdown uh, lever arm on. And right now it's not firing because the lever is too far advanced, but we'll get that straight in a moment. Throw lever for the free spool release. And we can set that. Grab the hex nut. This is why I use that parts tray so that I always have it close at hand. In this case, I guess I didn't put it in the parts tray. That didn't help, did it? Good news on the cranking down nut. I'm going to turn that in as much by hand as I can. I don't like the risk of stripping threads. I'm just going to pull that whole assembly together now.
now you can see that we're operating the way it's designed to operate with a turn and a flip. So this reel's a couple of short steps away from going fishing again. We're going to take this and put that onto the side plate then. Going to use our fingers with those uh, thumb, what I call thumb screws. Get them tight, the initial tights. If tights is a word. And we'll use the screwdriver to finish it. You don't want to over tighten the side plate, but you do want to make sure they're snug. You don't want them rattling out on the boat and that. Okay, then we remember the balance of this then. Take the two tension washers that are here. And the three of them. These are nested. Remember, I took them out just the way they came came off the reel, so uh, not much of a, an issue there in terms of how to put it back. But if you uh, if you don't remember, go back to your um, pictures along the way. And this is always a challenge getting this without cross threading it. And again, these left-handed reels, you got to remember that it's opposite what you might normally do. So in this case, it's a counterclockwise twist to get this back on. Once that uh, main shaft starts spinning, you can put the handle on to hold that while you complete the rest of the, the turn. Okay, so we just, uh, just put this back on. We got a nice spinning reel now. Just complete the service then by putting on the, the uh, little tension washer on there. And we're going to grab the handle. I'm going to grab the washer. Now, I, for some reason, this washer was sitting there. I'm not sure where that's located. I'm going back to the, the schematic here, and I'm not really seeing it. Ah, there it goes. So the washer goes underneath the handle. I just, uh, just was checking that schematic that you saw earlier. So over here, it has the tension washer, and then the round washer, and then the handle. Go ahead and go do that. So I guess when this came in, I'll go back and check my video now. See if this came in that way or if that was just me kind of getting it messed up a little bit. Once the handle goes on, you can put that C-clip on. It holds the main gear shaft in place. And word of advice, hold that darn C-clip. Because if that shoots, it's a tough one to find. And I press it in with the little uh, needle nose pliers. Next up then would be the, the handle nut. And again, reverse threaded because it's a left-handed reel. And you just need to make sure you properly thread it going on. Here we go. A couple of turns with our 11 millimeter wrench there. it's nice and tight. If it's not tight you wind up stripping out the, the threads. Sometimes folks don't get them tight because they haven't tightened the or they haven't brought down the star adjuster all the way and what that causes is a, um, a binding and that needs to be corrected. Okay then here's the one we were trying to put in as a side plate screw which is actually the handle screw. I think that should be the last piece on. At least I'm hopeful it's the last piece on because there's no more parts in my porch tray. So hopefully that's the answer there. That's on. A couple more turns of that screw. We should be good to go now. So we're turning nicely. The drag is holding nicely. If we back it off, we should have some play. Do 
should have the ability to free spool by tripping the lever. That spring is working. When we turn our reel in, that should click back into position and be ready to, to go fishing. So there we go. That is the Abu Ambassador 7001i. It had a broken spring in it that uh, caused the, the free spool not to work properly, jammed the reel up. Uh, we've replaced that spring and we've got this one ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Please tell your fishing friends to go ahead and subscribe as well as I'm trying to build my uh, viewer base. If you have uh, any questions or comments, please leave them in this section and I will be happy to respond to them and try and help you out if you're rebuilding a reel and have gotten stuck along the way. So thank you for watching. Again, this is Dennis Second Chance Tackle. I wish you great fishing.